Hey, this is Corey from SoundSlice. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can use SoundSlice as really the ultimate tool to transcribe music. So this is really great if you're interested in transcribing improvisations or folk tunes or anything like that. If you can hear it, you can transcribe it on SoundSlice. Uh, if you've never used SoundSlice to transcribe before, a really quick overview is we've taken all the tools that you would typically need to transcribe and put them together. So you can loop recordings, you can slow them down, and you can notate all directly inside the same application. And it really is the best experience to transcribe music, like I keep saying. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new sound slice slice and begin a new transcription. The first step is to add a recording. I'm gonna take a YouTube recording I found of a fiddle tune, an American fiddle song, and uh, post it in here as a recording. Once I do that, you'll see a empty space where a waveform will appear as soon as it's done processing and we'll be able to get started on that transcription. After a couple seconds, I've got the waveform. You can click and drag to manipulate a loop area. You notice if I hit play now, it will loop. That's great. Also in the bottom right, we have our handy dandy speed control so I can slow down the recording as I work with it. Obviously, this is very powerful. So we've got our recording, we know how to manipulate it, and now we just need a place to actually write music. So on the right side, you'll notice a button that says Start in our editor. Click that, and you'll have an option to add whatever kind of instrument track you want. I'm gonna add a basic guitar track because that's what this song has. And we have an empty editor space. If you've never used the SoundSlice editor to notate music, I will recommend, first and foremost, you go to soundslice.com help, and you'll see a button for creating we have tons of information here all about creating using the SoundSlice editor. There are videos, tips and tricks, and some keyboard shortcut recommendations that will get you cruising with the SoundSlice editor. I'm not going to get totally into it in this video. Just so you know, I'm using the keyboard arrow keys to move up and down the strings, and I'm going left and right to create new beats. You get the idea. Fret numbers are added just like you think by typing the number. Now that we're set up, what's the first step? What I like to do in my transcribing is to select a part of the waveform and create sync points for the areas that I'm going to transcribe. Now I might not do the entire piece all in one go, in fact that can be really tiring, so I might just take a couple phrases, you know, maybe it's four bars, maybe it's eight bars, that I'll identify as the place that I want to start transcribing. So let's do that here. I'm going to create sync points by listening to the music, tapping the letter T on the keyboard for the first four bars of music to transcribe. <laughs> Okay, great. We've got the first four bars identified there. There was a pickup note. Da -da 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 so I need to add one more sync point. I'm just going to add that before. I can fine tune it later. Uh, like you've maybe seen in some of the other videos we've put together, these sync points can be adjusted in case you clicked the T button just a little bit earlier, just a little bit late. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and create empty measures to match those sync points. So I'm going to Turn that rest into a whole rest and click the right arrow key to make a new measure. And as I do that, look at the playhead move in the waveform. Every time I make a new measure, it's moving to the next waveform. So now, as I navigate, I can go back and forth and you'll see how they are linked together. If I hit play now, you should see the playhead move through those empty measures in time with the music that I've marked. <laughs> Perfect, let's save that. Okay, so now on to the fun part. Let's actually figure out what these notes are and create the transcription using the editor. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that this has a pickup bar, so let's uh, just skip that for a moment and move on to the first full measure of music. So that's the second sync point. And what I like to do when I'm working through a transcription on SoundSlice is loop over that passage and listen to it you know, a good number of times until I think I've got at least the rhythm in my head. So let's do that first. Okay, so I've definitely at least got the rhythm. If I was unsure if it was difficult, I could slow it down. Ba 
but this is a relatively simple phrase. I've got a good idea of how the rhythm's going to be notated, so what about the notes? It might be useful to have an instrument nearby to be able to play some reference notes, or if you're perfect pitch, you won't need to worry about that. Another thing you can do is just type in notes in the editor and they will be played back for you as you're typing them. You can also click on them to hear that note sound back. So I'll usually try to figure out the tonic of the transcription first. So let me let me see if I can hum that note. Dum, it's pretty straightforward. Dum, so where's that note? To D. Uh, We're clearly in the key of D. I'm gonna click on the very first measure and add a key signature for D. So that's two sharps, F sharp, and C sharp. And now I've got pretty pretty good idea of where this is gonna go. So I know what my rhythms are, I know what my key is, I can start to hear those intervals a little bit more clearly the more I play it. Da 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 one one two three. Again, I can't teach you um, the basics of music theory all on this, so I'm expecting that you have a little bit of that. But uh, I will start typing here. Dum, da, da, da. So I'm switching rhythms using the keyboard shortcut to do that. So that's the plus and the minus keys. So just so you know. Dum, da, da, dun, dun. Dun, 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 ba, 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 da. Back to the tonic. That was an eighth note. Da, ba, da, seven. <laughs> to my music theory nerds, let me play that back. That's pretty cool, right? I've got one bar transcribed. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. And you can see as I zoom in, these notes are lining up right where you would start to see the beats in the waveform. It makes me think that I did a pretty good job identifying the rhythm. So that's a nice sign when you get that visual confirmation. I will create this loop. <laughs> Let's move on to the next measure. I'm just going to kind of keep doing this one note at a time, one bar at a time. I'm going to zoom out a little bit just because uh, the music's getting a little bit harder to see. I guess this is not this is not so important. It's just a little thumbnail. So this is a cool trick. You can just easily uh, slide and hide as much of the video that you have on the side there. So I can't really remember where I picked up rhythmically. I'm going to just give myself a little bit more playback. Something like that. And again, keyboard shortcuts to make the beats. So I don't know if I'm remembering this correctly. I'm going to slow it down a bit. This is a cool trick. You can click on the notes to hear them. Part of the second beat, I can't really figure it out. Let me... So I skipped a note here. This should be sixth. So there's no shame in going note by note when you're making a transcription. This is something I do all the time, and it's really useful if you're having trouble finding a pitch to just repeat it over and over and over again. And I'm kind of talking to myself and singing to myself. I hope it's not too distracting, but I imagine you will have a similar process yourself. So let's go back to just hearing this whole measure. That's where we're at. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I hope the people at home are not upset about this. <laughs> cool.
cool. We got it. Let's move on to the next bar. Now, hold on. That sounded a lot like the first bar, didn't it? So it's almost the same. Let's save ourselves some work. You can select, click, and drag that first bar. Hit Command C on a Mac or Control C on Windows to copy. Click your new bar, and you know what to do. Paste. There were just two differences I heard from the first phrase, which was there was a nice slide, uh, a slide into the pitch, which means it couldn't have been on the open string. It means if you're a guitar player, you know it's on the string below it. So I can make this change where I get rid of that note and I add a little nuance here to the tablature, a slide up into it. And look at this transcription. It's looking mighty professional. And then that interval is different. To the five rather than to the seven. So it's just slightly different. That whole measure took us just a second to get done, which is great. And now let's go on to the last part of this transcription. Very similar to the bar before, but not exactly. Maybe I can copy and paste the first two beats and see, see how far that gets me. Okay, so those, te those two beats are the same. Where do we go from there? So this is sometimes hard about stopping and starting is it's it's hard to know where you pick up. Back to the tonic. It sounds like there's two guitars sort of diverting there, so one of them's going to the five. Do, do, back to the next note. So we'll just stay on that one guitar part even though there's another okay so this is going very well um i'm gonna just get that pickup note now do, do, dum, do, do, dum. sound like two sixteenth notes i'm gonna put in one of the rests the eighth note because i like to have like a full beat do, but that's obviously just a personal preference and i'll add the pickup marker indicator, the pickup bar button, which you'll find here in the submenu for bar. So now we are telling the system that this is a pickup bar, and I'll add a double bar for good measure. I'll do that at the end of this phrase too, just so it looks nice and divided. Because the pickup bar doesn't have an entire measure of notation, it's probably a good idea to make sure those notes line up exactly where they sound. <laughs> Cool. So now I can play this back at full speed. I'm going to close the sync point editor and just enjoy this transcription. Okay, great. That was a lot of fun to get together. It's a nice little transcription and you can see how having all the sound slice tools just made it a lot easier to focus on a particular section repeat it over and over until it uh, started to make sense to your ear, and then to actually notate it and have it all done in one place. I'll leave you with two more bits of advice as you're learning how to use the editor to transcribe. Uh, we've covered this in some of our other help material, but you should become very friendly with the search box. If you don't know where to find a particular command, uh, like pickup bar, for example, you can just type it and you're gonna find that, uh, that icon pop up. You can also click the help button and keyboard shortcuts. You're going to find a list of all the keyboard shortcuts that make transcribing really fast, really easy. So this was a simple piece that uses guitar, which meant that we were typing in notes using fret numbers. If you're transcribing something else in sound slice that's non-fretted, that's no problem. You just enter in pitch numbers instead of fret numbers. So A, B, C, D, and all that sort of thing. I would recommend you just take a look at our help documentation on using the editor, and it'll show you exactly how to handle that. I hope this was helpful and I hope it shows you the power of using SoundSlice to transcribe. Have a good day.